Greetings, Church, and welcome to the Meeting House of the First Baptist Church in America on this first Sunday in May. Thank you for joining us for this time of prayer, song, and reflection. In all our many places, you continue to be the church in taking care of one another, seeking to live in harmony with your neighbors, and to walk humbly with your God. Thank you for continuing to send in your prayer requests by phone and message to the church office. This helps us to best know how to hold you in prayer. We are grateful that you are ensuring that the work of church continues through your gifts. Know that you are offering support our ministries here locally, as well as relief and development projects in partnership with our other mission partners around the world. What you do makes a difference and we appreciate it. If you would like more information about our community or our ministries, visit our website at fbcia.org. We know that many places are opening up again and, re, um, and loosening restrictions. We are going to continue to meet online. This is for a number of reasons. One of the primary ones is that we will be undergoing some extensive renovations of our very antique heating system so that we will be able to be warm and God willing in the meeting house come autumn. So stay tuned for updates on that. Today we are in for a real treat. In the before time we had planned a visit from one of our international missionaries, Ricardo Mayol Bracero. And in lieu of waiting any longer to hear from him, we have invited him to join us today and bring us a word. Ricardo is a regional consultant who accompanies the members of the Continental Christian Network for Peace, better known as Reconpaz, in theological pastoral formation. And amongst their goals are to protect human rights and integral ecology, to investigate and denounce those who originate violence beyond their borders, to educate and inspire the defense of life, to advocate for the use of arts and social media to denounce violence, to move churches and believers to defend human rights and integral ecology, and many more remarkable efforts his work is based in Guatemala, where he works closely with the Ecumenical Christian Council of Guatemala and where he promotes Reconpaz's goals for peace and justice throughout the continent. His work together with international missions partners align with the Continental Christian Network for Peace, and it is a real joy to welcome here to our community this morning. We thank God for his ongoing work and know that we will be blessed by his message here today. It is our practice to share in the Lord's Supper together on the first Sunday of each month. And this morning, in all our many places, we will join together in spirit and in receiving this meal. When Jesus shared this meal with his disciples, he told them to do this and remember. And so it is in this spirit that we invite you now to pause and gather the elements that you will need later in this service so that you will be able to join with us at that time. Go and get the beverage and bread of your choosing so that you can be prepared. We know that we can and do pray in many different ways with our bodies, with our breath, with our minds, 
with our actions, with our intentions. Join with me now as we turn our hearts to God in spoken and in responsive prayer. We confess, O oh God, that there are times when we want what we want far exceeds what we need. We often go to great lengths to acquire what we desire. Like King Ahab, we become resentful and sullen when we don't get our way. We're reluctant to acknowledge the consequences of our own actions, ignoring your cries for justice. Even when we live more simply, we remain tempted to judge what other people do and say. Our judgments produce labels that we apply with ease, erecting barriers to your grace. How can we love our neighbors as ourselves with such barriers in place? In the midst of our fear, we are called to be the church of hope. Call us to be lovingly bold in our faith. In the midst of sorrow, we are called to be the church of comfort. Call us to be lovingly compassionate in our deeds. In the midst of alienation, we are called to be the church of unity. Call us to be lovingly responsive to the needs of others. In the midst of anger, we are called to be the church of peace. Call us to be those who would build bridges of peace and communication. Help us hear the cries of those in need. Help us feel the sorrow of those who are lost and alone. Help us to each reach out to one another in your love. Help us to be the church of trust and witness to your will, O oh God. We pray now in the manner that Jesus taught us, saying, Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
1 Reyes 21, versos 1 a 19. Y sucedió que después de estas cosas, Nabot de Jezreel tenía una viña que estaba en Jezreel, junto al palacio de Acab, rey de Samaria. Y Acab habló a Nabot, diciendo, Dame tu viña, para que me sirva de huerta para hortaliza, porque está cerca, al lado de mi casa, y yo te daré en su lugar una viña mejor. Si prefieres, te daré su precio en dinero. Pero Nabot le dijo a Acab, No permita el Señor que te dé la herencia de mis padres. Acab entonces se fue a su casa, disgustado y molesto, a causa de la palabra que Nabot de Jezreel le había dicho, pues dijo, No te daré la herencia de mis padres. Y se acostó en su cama, volvió su rostro y no comió. Pero Jezabel, su mujer, se acercó a él y le dijo, ¿Por qué está tu espíritu tan decaído que no comes? Entonces él le respondió, ¿Por qué le hablé a Nabot de Jezreel y le dije, Dame tu viña por dinero, y si prefieres te daré una viña en su lugar? Pero él dijo, No te daré mi viña. Su mujer Jezabel le dijo, ¿No reinas ahora sobre Israel? Levántate, come, y alégrese tu corazón. Yo te daré la viña de Nabot de Israel. Y ella escribió cartas en nombre de Acab, las selló con su sello, y envió las cartas a los hombres que vivían en la ciudad con Nabot. Y escribió en las cartas diciendo, Proclamad ayuno, y sentad a Nabot a la cabeza del pueblo. Sentad a dos hombres malvados delante de él que testifican contra él, diciendo, Tú has blasfemado a Dios y al rey. Entonces sacadlo, apedradlo, para que muera. Los hombres de su ciudad hicieron como Jezabel les había mandado, tal como estaba escrito en las cartas que ella les había enviado. Proclamaron ayuno y sentaron a Nabot a la cabeza del pueblo. Entonces entraron los dos hombres malvados y se sentaron delante de él y testificaron contra Nabot delante del pueblo, diciendo, Nabot ha blasfemado a Dios y al rey. Y lo llevaron fuera de la ciudad, lo apedrearon y murió. Después enviaron un mensaje a Jezabel diciendo, Nabot ha sido apedreado y ha muerto. Y cuando Jezabel oyó que Nabot había muerto, Jezabel dijo a Acab, Levántate, toma posesión de la viña de Nabot de Jezreel, la cual él se negó a darte por dinero porque Nabot no está vivo, sino muerto. Cuando Acab oyó que Nabot había muerto, se levantó para descender a la viña de Nabot para tomar posesión de ella. Entonces vino la palabra del Señor a Elías Tisbita, diciendo, Levántate, desciende al encuentro de Acab, rey de Israel, que está en Samaria, y allí él está en la viña de Nabot, a donde ha descendido a tomar posesión de ella. Le hablarás diciendo, Así dice el Señor, ¿Has asesinado y además has tomado posesión de la viña? En el lugar donde los perros lamieron la sangre de Nabot, los perros lamerán tu sangre, tu misma sangre. Our Old Testament lesson is found in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Now this is the story of Naboth, the Jezreelite, who owned a vineyard. And this is the story of Ahab, king of Samaria, who wanted to get his hands on that vineyard. Give ear to this holy word and hear what happens. Sometime later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth, the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. 
Ahab said to Naboth, let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden, since it is so close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth. But Naboth replied, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. So Ahab went home, sullen and angry, because Naboth, the Jezreelite, had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. He lay on his bed, sulking, and he refused to eat. His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, because I said to Naboth, the Jezreelite, sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel, his wife, said, is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. But seat two scoundrels opposite him, and have them testify that he has cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city did as Jezebel directed in the letters she had written to them. They, procl they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth in a prominent place among the people. Then two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and brought charges against Naboth before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent word to Jezebel, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you. He is no longer alive, but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Go down and meet Ahab, king of Israel who rules in Samaria. He is now in Naboth's vineyard, where he has gone to take possession of it. Say to him, this is what the Lord says. Have you not murdered a man and seized his property? Then say to him, this is what the Lord says. In the place where dogs licked up Naboth's blood, Dogs will now lick up your blood. Yes, yours. May God add his blessing to the reading of this holy word. Thank you for uh, inviting me to be part of the Fair Baptist Church of America worship service today before giving me the opportunity for bringing the word of God. Thank you, Pastor Jamie. And thank you for supporting me as your missionary. I will relate the, my work with the scripture of the Naboth Vineyard, uh, showing how we are responding to the tragic situation of our country. The Assyrian Empire upset 
the whole Middle East, invited many countries. Um, excited many people to the head of the empire. Um, subjected many people to be vassals for the empire, forcing them to pay taxes. All this through a bl bloody and devastating uh, military force. Israel, the northern kingdom, no longer existed. Judah, the southern kingdom, was forced to move its capital city from Jerusalem to Samaria. This is the story of the uh, Nabot Vineyard. Uh, the king went to Nabot Vineyard, that it was next to the king palace, and asked Nabot to, to sell for a price his pot. Now I would say, never in my life. Uh, it doesn't have a price. So the king went to his palace, uh, sad, and his wife told him, you are the king. You can do anything that you want. I will solve this situation. She developed a plan. She said that we will do a judgment to Nabot for testimonies. We'll tell the, to the judge that Nabot a profane God and the king. And that day, they have to do a fasting. Then they have to take out Nabot outside the city and kill him. Same as she plans, happens. The queen tells Nabot, the situation is all. Go get your piece of land. Today, the entire Latin American is a great vineyard of Nabot. Uh, all the countries were weakened. They were not able to pay the foreign debt. And the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank force them to, to, to do structural changes that uh, weaken their frontiers and open them for transnational corporation to enter. So many of these big companies are forcing all the countries to de regulate the economy. And this is taking away legislations that protect the environment, the water as a common good. And the result is that the companies are taking away many of the wealth of the countries. We are coming back to the first uh, time in years of the conquest, where the white man came for gold and silver, now also gold and silver and water, same as the king and the queen 
that under the Assyrian Empire tried to serve themselves uh, violating the covenant of the Lord with the people. When the king was prepare, preparing himself to add to his properties the Naboth vineyard, our Lord, the Lord of the covenant, spoke to Elias, told him, go to the Naboth vineyard, condemn uh, the action of the king and the queen. And today, there are many Elias. The Lord has called them to, to be protectors, guardians, of creation, and these are c communities that have organized themselves and knowing that they have to protect the river or the mountain because protecting it gives life to them and to the future generations. We, uh, in our ministry, had found these communities that are defending their land against hydroelectric companies or energy production companies or mining companies. We have united many church people the faith people, ecumenical, Catholics and Protestants in each country the, where the network is present. These faith people are relating to the guardian communities that are protecting creation. I understand that uh, the call for confronting those who destroy is, is a call from the Lord. To these communities, you know, the guardians community, we tell them you are not alone. We, your straw is our straw. Our yearnings for peace and justice are reflected in what you are looking for, working for invest in yourself for. We are telling them, we are here. We are in this, in each country, people are going there and telling them we are with you. But also we are telling each country that their struggle is the struggle of the other countries. And when they see themselves reflected on the others, inside the country and outside. They feel strength, and they feel that the Lord is with them. Yeah, there's a lot of pain happening, a lot of suffering. Uh, many of these communities are being criminalized. Many of the defenders of creation have been murdered, disappeared, or life threat. It's a very difficult situation. We need partners of this network in, in North America. And we hope that you could help us to create a, a, a network of people that vibrate for justice and peace and for caring for creation and for the guardians of creation to, to connect with us. That so we are inviting you to be with us. And you are the first Baptist Church of America, the first one of the whole continent. We need your moral force to be with us for bringing the kingdom of God 
and they're forcing those who are violating the covenant of God to be submitted by our King Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings, my brother. Take care. Eh, mi abrazo con ustedes. Welcome to this table. Welcome to this feast. The requirement for participating in this meal is that you hunger and you thirst after God's love and righteousness. Jesus reminded us that something happens when we join together, when we eat and when we remember. The Church Beyond the Walls issues an invitation that we echo here today. This is Christ's table. So come you who feel weak and unworthy, you who come often and you who have stayed away. Come you who love Jesus and you who wish you could. Come sinners and saints, women and men, gay and straight, cisgendered and trans. Come, you who are sober and you who are not. Come, you who are houseless and you who have a place to lay your head. Come, you who are citizens of this land and you who are not. Here, you are citizens in the realm of God. Now join God's people in this feast that has been prepared for you from the beginning of the world. We bless this table with a prayer that comes to us from our brothers and sisters in Argentina. God bless to us this bread and give bread to all those who are hungry and hunger for justice to all those who are fed, God bless to us our bread. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and blessed it. And after doing so, he offered it to his friends, breaking it, saying, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this, do so and remember me. Brothers and sisters, take and eat this bread of life. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup saying, this is the new covenant poured out in me. As often as you drink this, do so and remember me. Friends, take and drink this cup of heaven. We thank you, our God, for all that makes life fulfilling and sweet. Just as we are refreshed by this meal, may we go into your world to bring strength and sweetness, sustenance and joy. Thank you for this reminder. Help us to live in your ways. Amen. Friends, you continue to share this meal by donating to an organization that makes sure that all are fed here in Rhode Island, that could be Better Lives Rhode Island. There are other organizations as well in your neighborhood. Please be generous. This is how we live as the body of Christ. So now, as we have been filled and been refreshed, receive this and go in God's own peace. 
Dios te bendiga. Amén.